Hello again, I'm Damon Pohl. Thank you for joining me, and welcome to another Versus episode. This time we'll be taking a look at vampire fiction. Today's episode is not for the faint of heart, as we will attempt to find out what separates dark fantasy and horror, and skirt the fine line between shonen and seinen. We'll start with the usual disclaimers, but if you'd like to skip straight to the main event, here is a timestamp. First off, a huge trigger warning for horror, violence, and blood. Iganjima has many disturbing scenes and should not be recommended to children. I will not go into any of the gory details, but mentioning these topics is unavoidable. Iganjima has more mature themes than even our old friend, Attack on Titan. There will also be light spoilers related to the character's plot and premise of both manga. Please support the authors of these works, as well as your local publishers and bookstores. Be sure to ask for the works to be printed if they aren't available in your area. Finally, as always, I am not arguing that either manga is better than the other. Rather, I am comparing comics in an attempt to further my own enjoyment and education. With that out of the way, let's get started with our fanged features. Demon Slayer vs. Higanjima Part 1 the overview. The comics we will look at today heavily involve vampires. Myths of immortal beings and bloodthirsty monsters have existed throughout history, such as Greek and Roman myths of flesh-eating spirits, Algonquin stories of cannibal wendigos, or Navajo legends of shape-shifting skinwalkers. Later, vampires became codified as a staple of fantasy media. Early written examples of vampiric texts include works like Polidori's The Vampire, written in 1819, a story produced in the same writing competition as Mary Shelley's Frankenstein. The Vampire features romance, murder, and betrayal, which are all now staples of the genre. Another early work is Carmilla by Sheridan Le Fanu. Written in 1872, Carmilla is considered a prototypical example of the lesbian vampire, as the protagonist is pursued by a fanged femme fatale. The story also features an early instance of an occult detective, an archetype featured in many manga such as Yu Yu Hakusho or Mob Psycho 100. And of course, there is the legendary Dracula by Bram Stoker, written in 1897. The infamous work pieces together a cryptic narrative through diary entries, letters, and newspaper articles. Vampire stories have seen continued success and a variety of modern interpretations. There are video games like Castlevania, my favorite of which is Symphony of the Night, a game featured in one of my first videos on this channel. There are also long-running TV shows like Buffy the Vampire Slayer, True Blood, or The Vampire Diaries. One of my most beloved iterations of vampire fiction is the UK TV show Being Human. It started airing in 2008 and ran for five seasons. The show shines in displaying a diverse and realistic supernatural society with truly deep characters. The title, Being Human, features a recurring theme, as monsters provide us an opportunity to discuss and dissect notions of humanity. The infamous 1998 cult classic Blade also comes to mind, a movie filled with standards of vampire lore, like aversion to sunlight, trained slayers, and underground societies vying for control of the world. Another more recent standout series is Midnight Mass, released on Netflix in 2021. The show highlights some of the religious lore that can be baked into vampire stories, and the battle between faith and fear. Midnight Mass features islands and isolation, ideas that also show up in the comics we'll discuss today. Now that we've warmed up by the fire and we're positive we let the right one in, Let's discuss two manga and how they borrow and expand upon common vampire fiction themes, starting with the New Age Shonen Spectacle, Demon Slayer. Demon Slayer, or Kimitsu no Yaiba, Blade of Demon Destruction, is a manga created by Koyoharu Gotoge. Demon Slayer was first published in 2016 by Shueisha. An anime adaptation was released in 2019 by the studio UFO Table. Prior to creating Demon Slayer, Gotoge made four one-shot manga. Of the four, Kagari Gari is considered to be a precursor to Demon Slayer. It features a world where both humans and demons are being hunted, with a setting and style similar to the Demon Slayer universe. 
In an interview for Manga Plus, Mr. Karayama, Kotoge's editor, explained how Kagari Gari evolved into Demon Slayer. However, due to its serious tone, lack of comic relief, and dark story, it didn't make the cut for serialization. I thought it wouldn't be able to get through unless the main character wasn't switched out, and so I asked Kotoge Sensei if there wasn't a brighter, more normal character in the world he had created. That's how Tenjiro and Demon Slayer came to be. Demon Slayer is known for its vibrant and memorable character designs, as well as its shonen adventure story. Demon Slayer takes place in a world where humans live in fear of demons. Demon Slayers protect humanity by defeating these monsters, striking a tenuous balance. The protagonist Tanjiro is called to action when his family is killed and his sister is turned into a demon. Here is the official description from the back of the first printed volume. In Taisho-era Japan, kind-hearted Tenjiro Kamada makes his living selling charcoal, but his peaceful life is shattered when a demon slaughters his entire family. His little sister, Nezuko, is the only survivor, but she has been transformed into a demon herself. Tenjiro sets out on a dangerous journey to find a way to return his sister to normal and destroy the demon who ruined his life. Learning to slay demons won't be easy, and Tenjiro barely knows where to start. The surprise appearance of another boy named Giyu, who seems to know what's going on, might provide some answers, but only if Tenjiro can stop Giyu from killing his sister first. Demon Slayer might be one of the new big three of manga, alongside Jujutsu Kaisen and One Piece. This is a remarkable feat, as Kotoge mentions being influenced by manga like Bleach and Naruto works that are often considered part of the big three of the early 2000s. Kotoge also mentions the long-running comic Gintama as an inspiration. Demon Slayer has seen worldwide popularity, and a new season of the anime began airing this year. Next, we'll take a look at the more mature and horror-themed manga, the seinen sensation that is Higanjima. Higanjima, or The Island of Paramita, is a manga created by Koji Matsumoto. It was first released in 2002 by Kodansha. Koji Matsumoto is an established mangaka and is also credited as an animator on several Pokemon movies. Besides Higanjima, Matsumoto has two serialized works, Coup d'etat Club and Saori. The former is a gender-bending school-life seinen manga, while the latter is a mature work about infatuation and adult relationships. Higanjima also has two direct sequel series. Higanjima Saigo no Yonju Nana Nichikan, or The Last 47 Days, and Higanjima Yonju Hachi Nichiko, meaning 48 Days Later. There was also a comedy spin off released in 2020. A gag manga titled Kare Kishijima was created and illustrated by Taro Sasebo. It is particularly interesting that a horror manga would inspire a comedy work, but as we'll see later on, humor and Higanjima aren't necessarily mutually exclusive. Higanjima was adapted into two live-action movies. Higanjima Escape from Vampire Island was released in 2009. A few years later, in 2016, Higanjima Vampire Island was released covering the events of the last 47 days. The manga was also adapted into TV dramas in 2013 and 2016. The subtitle, Island of Paramita, relates to a Buddhist idea regarding perfection. Paramita is commonly translated as perfection, but also has a second suggested meaning. Para, meaning beyond, the further bank, shore, or boundary, and Mita, meaning that which has arrived, or Ita, meaning that which goes. Paramita then means that which has gone beyond. Sometimes the subtitle is translated as the Isle of Paradise or Nirvana Island. Each interpretation, while similar, has a slightly different flavor and hints towards the mysteries hiding on the island of Higanjima. The meaning of the kanji on the front cover is a multiple pun in Japanese. It literally means Equinox Island or the Yonder Isle, perhaps even the island on the other side. It is also a reference to Higanbana, the red-flowered spider lilies, whose poisonous bulbs are sometimes strewn at the edges of Japanese farmhouses to kill mice. 
Higanjima has no description on the back of its printed volumes, perhaps to keep the mystery intact and the reader guessing. Here is a brief description from the first live-action movie released in 2009. Higanjima is an eerie island occupied by vampires, from where none has ever come back alive. When teenager Akira hears that his missing brother has been seen on the island, he decides to investigate with several friends. Akira and his friends struggle to survive and escape the island. Akira changes in appearance, skill, and personality over the course of the story. His reunions with his brother only further muddies the waters, and the horrors of the island and its immediate surroundings make Akira's old life and home feel like distant memories. When reading Higanjima, I remember thinking it would be hard to write a vampire manga after this series was created. It has the feeling of being a definitive comic version of the classic vampire story. It features familiar themes, but uses them in unique and effective ways. Now that we've wet our teeth with these two dark comics, let's take a look at their similarities. This is a final spoiler warning, as I will now discuss some of the specific aspects of these stories. Part 2. The Similarities As with the zombie fiction we discussed in our first Versus episode, vampires provide a clear enemy, an analog to portray the difference between monster and human. They are immortal and immoral, and always hungry for blood. Faced with this unnatural threat, characters learn about themselves and what it means to be alive. The demons in these stories have many features common to the myths of vampires. Sharp fangs for drinking blood, superhuman speed and strength. In both comics, the demons have powerful regenerative abilities, surviving losing limbs or even decapitation. The demons can also pass along the curse, turning humans into vampires. Typically, this happens when a human drinks or comes into contact with a vampire's blood after being bitten. Characters must take precautions not to accidentally become infected during battle. This also allows vampires to choose who to turn into allies or everlasting servants, and who to let die. This reinforces the idea of lineages and a chain of demons persisting over decades or even centuries. As with zombies, being bitten and infected is a constant worry. However, vampires are not as simple as the mindless, staggering corpses. They possess cunning, instinct, and are driven by insatiable thirst. Vampires will occasionally maintain some of their personality and skills, and in rare cases, their morality. The similarities between Demon Slayer and Higanjima are clear. There is a scene in Volume 1 of Demon Slayer that sets the tone of the harsh world. The siblings enter a house and find a demon feasting on its recent kills. They are quickly attacked by the demon when it recognizes Tanjiro as a human. The scene could be dropped right onto the island of Higanjima without any changes, and it would fit perfectly. Both manga include vampires who attempt to resist drinking human blood. The willpower to overcome the thirst is a common theme in vampire media. Vampires like Angel in Buffy, or Hal in Being Human, resist for years, finding alternatives to human blood, or using routines to maintain abstinence. However, there are consequences for not drinking blood. The vampires starve and lose their minds. The last remnants of self sink away as they mutate into demons. In Demon Slayer, the thirst is more of a hunger for flesh. Eating humans heals and regenerates the demons, and can make them grow stronger. Just like Higanjima, without humans to feed on, the demons are at a great risk of losing their minds. Nezuko finds a way to regenerate by sleeping allowing her to keep the curse at bay when traveling with her beloved brother. The stories both feature cosmic horror. Take a look at the covers of a few Higanjima volumes, and you'll see what I mean. Beyond typical vampires, there are all manner of wild creatures. From humanoid beasts with animal heads to giant spiders, the island of Higanjima is full of countless horrors. Some of the huge mindless demons are controlled by more lucid vampire handlers, making for a potent combination. In Demon Slayer, the older a demon is, the more they have been fortified by feeding on humans. They are said to exhibit supernatural powers or even change shape. The demons can heal wounds quickly and must be killed by specific means, 
wooden stakes fire and decapitation are usually effective methods. Barring violent intervention, vampires are near immortal, frozen in time at the moment they were turned, unchanging over the centuries. The idea of immortality provides many interesting plot points. Being present across the many changes of history, losing friends and accumulating wealth, it would be hard to remain sane. The idea of immortal lethargy is taken to the extreme in the novel Stranger in a Strange Land by Robert Heinlein, published in 1961. This work features immortal Martians and discusses how immortality could lead to the ultimate laziness. What one can do today, one could just as easily do tomorrow. There is no need for urgency, and as such, the Martians become stagnant, living an increasingly sedentary life. Vampires, too, can become complacent and disconnected. Hunting humans combats both the constant hunger for warm blood, as well as the need for entertainment. Vampires can feed off of causing emotions like fear and anger in an effort to feel anything at all. Without giving away any spoilers, I will say that both series play with the idea of infected friends and families, and what lengths we will go to save those close to us. The stories present the struggle to fight for control and not to become a burden when bitten. Tanjiro protects his sister Nezuko, and Akira hunts to find traces of his brother at Sushi. Both meet allies along the way, and there are typical shonen elements like friendship and group synergy. Another similarity is physical combat, fighting for one's life against countless foes. Both stories show off historical weapons and clothing from Japan's past. Japanese-style swords like katanas are common, as well as other medieval weapons like spears, flails, axes, and tridents. The stories both feature characters training their combat skills and sword arts from a mentor. Another mirrored point is that both mentors wear masks covering their face. Uro Todaki's mask resembles a tengu, a mountain creature from Japanese mythology. In Higanjima, the giant man they call Master wears a mask obscuring half his face, as well as a necklace of prayer beads. Both teachers school the protagonists not only about combat, but also the history and theory of battling monsters. In both stories, the common enemy abilities are close to what you'd expect from vampire fiction. This provides a familiar starting point and a chance to break from the mold with unique enemies or events. Higanjima's main villain, Miyabi, has the power of persuasion. He can brainwash and manipulate people, either by intimidation or with vampiric charm. On the island, he survives being shot, stabbed, and decapitated. In the slightly more fantastical Demon Slayer, Tanjiro has a heightened sense of smell, something he shares with his mentor. Throughout the story, he meets friends and foes with various quirks and supernatural abilities. Higenjima and Demon Slayer both feature large-scale boss battles with hordes of vampires or huge grotesque demons. These battles progress the story and mark the protagonist's rising strength. They break up the usual struggle to survive that the characters face with a clear challenge and victory, or as often is the case in Higenjima, a defeat. There are more similarities in how the stories were created and adapted into other media. As with our last Versus episode, these series have mangaka who are both author and illustrator. This impressive feat allows the author to have more creative control. Both authors used earlier works to experiment and perfect character designs, settings, and costumes. Saori has a character that closely resembles Atsushi and the world and conflict in Kagari Gari eventually blossomed into the Demon Slayer series. Both series have seen widespread commercial success. Demon Slayer is 23 volumes and finished publication in 2020. Higenjima's first series ran for 33 volumes and finished in 2010. Including the two sequels, Higenjima has 88 printed volumes in total. Both works have translated well into other forms of media. Demon Slayer has a very successful anime, the studio UFO Table and their animation is highly praised. Prior to Demon Slayer, UFO Table worked on series like Fate Zero and Fate Stay Night, among others. Higanjima had a short run of anime episodes released on YouTube, titled Higanjima X, 
There were 12 episodes in total, each with a brief three-minute duration. Beyond anime, both series have video game adaptations. Igenjima had a PSP game released in 2005. The game resembles a visual novel or text adventure as you guide Akira in the search to find his brother. Years later, Demon Slayer Kimitsu no Yaiba, The Hinokami Chronicles, was released for Steam and various consoles in 2021. Hinokami Chronicles features 3D graphics and is a fighting game. You can take control of the iconic Demon Slayers and battle against demons and even other players. A digital tabletop game, Sweep the Board, was released for Nintendo Switch in 2024. In this four-player party game, you roll dice and move across a board of locations from the comic, facing challenges and defeating enemies. The comics have also both seen live-action adaptations. As I mentioned earlier, Igenjima has several live-action movies and TV shows. While Demon Slayer currently doesn't have any live-action movies, it seems likely it will be adapted because of its popularity. If you can't wait, check out one of its numerous stage play adaptations. There are four stage plays from as early as 2019, as well as No and Kabuki versions, combining the comic story with the classical and highly ornamented forms of Japanese theater. I hope you'll agree that these works have a similar taste. Now let's drive in the steak and take a look at what makes them distinct. Part 3. The Differences Firstly, it is worth mentioning that Higanjima was released almost 15 years before Demon Slayer. Including all three parts of the story, it is one of the longest-running serialized horror manga of all time. In the early 2000s, there were different influences and trends in manga, and the medium only became more popular in the years that followed. Perhaps the most clear difference between these works is that Higenjima is truly a horror manga. When placed side by side, it is a distinct shift in tone from Demon Slayer. Higenjima doesn't pull any punches, the subject matter is horrific, and it pushes into even worse territory as the series goes on. Seinen manga is typically aimed at and marketed towards an older demographic, and Higenjima delivers an exciting and chilling atmosphere. Demon Slayer is more of a classic shonen. There is more downtime and room for characters to breathe. While there is death and violence, it isn't pushed to the extreme in the same way as Higenjima. Demon Slayer can be considered a dark fantasy and might be a good stepping stone for readers beginning to approach the horror genre. Another difference is that of setting and time period. Demon Slayer is set in the past, resembling the Taisho era around the 18 to 1950s. Higanjima is set in a more modern and technologically advanced world, closer to the turn of the millennium. An article on Anime News Network discusses Demon Slayer's fashion and historical references. While the anime takes place in the Taisho era, about when Western-style fashion became vogue in cities, the origins of Western and syncretic fashion in Japan can be found in the preceding Meiji. Another difference is the awareness of the vampire's existence. While some might be more affected than others, people in the world of Demon Slayer know about the demons, and the Demon Corps is an established organization fighting to combat the problem. On the other hand, the island in Higanjima is secret and isolated. Most of the world spins without knowing about the horrors of the island of paradise. The danger of vampires escaping the island to the mainland is a constant threat. When reading Higanjima, I remember being captivated by the setting change. The story starts inside a dense and crowded city. It takes several chapters and hundreds of pages before the characters leave the city in search of the island, the real setting of the series. As a reader, you remember the world that came before just like the characters do, making the shift of setting more striking. I think Demon Slayer could learn a lesson from Higanjima's pacing. In Demon Slayer, the call to adventure happens almost immediately, before you get a sense of who Tanjiro is or what their life is like. The disruption and slaughter of the village feels like it has less weight or stakes because it happens so quickly. Higanjima gives you a chance to get to know the characters, their friendships, and the dynamics of their everyday life. This adds a layer of drama as the events unfold on the island. In Demon Slayer, the demons have a classic weakness to sun 
bursting into flames when hit by the light of dawn. The safety of bright spaces allows a reprieve from the threat of demons, as well as an alternative means of combat. In Higanjima, however, sunlight is not an issue for the vampires. Their singular concern is a supply of human blood to avoid losing their sanity, and in some cases, their humanoid form. Humans need to be kept as cattle. The vampire factions must strike a balance between taking over the world and destroying human society completely. Vampires and humans are sent to the mainland to replenish the island's supply of food. In vampire literature, there is often a schism between those who wish to farm humans and those who prefer to hunt them. There are also aesthetic differences in the stories. Previously, I mentioned similarities regarding clothing and weapons. However, the Demon Slayer designs are more vibrant and varied. The characters are stylized and distinct, with their brightly colored Haori cloaks and signature items like Nezuko's bamboo muzzle. It makes sense that Kotoge cites Bleach as an influence, as Kubo, its creator, is another fashion-forward mangaka with a distinct style. The anime news network fashion article goes over Tenjiro's memorable checkered green outfit. The uniform Tenjiro wears resembles a Gakuran. The Gakuran is a type of male student clothing schools adopted during the Meiji era. While no longer serving a war-related purpose, Today's Gakuran remains a common staple of winter uniforms for elementary to high school male students. Higanjima has a blend of modern and older outfits depending on the situation. Despite being set in a modern time, once the characters are trapped on the island, they encounter many villages living more old-fashioned ways. The island is a snapshot of hundreds of years ago, well preserved by Miyabi's minions. Atsushi stands out with his modern glasses and face mask, while many island inhabitants dress in clothes resembling Buddhist garbs. They wear cloaks that look like yukata and straw hats similar to takuhatsugasa. The variety in Higanjima comes from its cosmic horror monsters, but the vampires and other filler characters can be quite similar in appearance. Demon Slayer leans into its historic wardrobe. The clothing designs help make the story and characters memorable. Their unique weapons and gakuran make them instantly recognizable. Everything in Demon Slayer has more of a shonen feel, providing a lighter overall tone. The Demon Slayers harness fantastical elemental powers called breathing techniques. These bright abilities would stick out in Higanjima, but they fit right in with Demon Slayer's colorful cast. While Higanjima does have shonen tropes, like recurring rivals and characters monologuing during battle, they are mixed in between truly disturbing events. The fantasy elements of Higenjima are reserved to enhance the horror. Besides Akira's remarkable speed and strength, he is a regular human. Another difference is that the main characters in Demon Slayer are a package deal. The brother and sister duo center the plot and help provide tension. Tenjiro has a constant reminder of his lost family and the perils of the demon hordes. Curing Nezuko represents his goal of finding peace from the demons. While friends and family are present in Higanjima, Akira is the clear protagonist. In the Manga Plus article from earlier, Kotoge's editor, Katayama, says that a lack of comic relief and a dark tone is what made Kagari Gari evolve into Demon Slayer. Higanjima maintains a sinister atmosphere, but manages to occasionally find that comic relief and interrupt the rising tension. This gives the reader a break and allows a wider range of dynamics, which helps make the next dramatic moment shine. An example of humor in Higanjima is the character Tanaka, a recurring character dressed only in a simple bath towel. This character finds a way to stay in a bath towel despite fighting a war against vampires over an extended period of time. Tanaka provides comic relief and pokes fun at the modesty towels, onset and bath scenes, and other fanservice tropes common in manga. The lighter moments of Higanjima inspired the comedy spin-off mentioned earlier, Kare Kishijima. This four-volume gag comic involves a man in a suit adventuring across the island of Higanjima, and encountering familiar characters, friend and foe, human and otherwise. As one would expect based on its island inspiration, the gag strip is still quite violent. 
While both series have seen mainstream success, Demon Slayer was a breakout hit. The shonen style of Demon Slayer helped with merchandising as well as cosplay and fan communities. It was easy to find information on Demon Slayer when researching this essay. It was localized, published, and marketed extensively to an English audience. There is a vibrant fan community and a lot of online discourse. On the other hand, I often had to find and translate Japanese articles to get more information on Higanjima and its history. Higanjima did see success in the French market with publisher Soleil Manga, but it does not currently have an English print run, leaving only fan translations. An official English version or full-length anime adaptation would surely launch Higanjima to a new audience. With the popularity of Netflix's Castlevania, it is clear there are a lot of fans of animated vampire fiction. By all accounts, Higanjima is extremely successful. Not every comic has dozens of volumes and is widely sold, with a fan base eager to support sequels and live action versions. Higanjima is a hit both in print and on screen, but it still pales in comparison to the scale of Demon Slayer. Demon Slayer quickly became one of the most well known series in recent years. Nowadays, Demon Slayer is among the best selling manga of all time, alongside works like Slam Dunk. Doraemon, and Dragon Ball. It has sold more than 150 million volumes and had a large cultural impact, becoming a defining manga of its time. A related difference is in critical reception, at least at the awards level. Demon Slayer has won a slew of awards. In 2020, Demon Slayer won the Bookwalker and Pekoma Awards and was Da Vinci's Book of the Year. The anime and feature-length movies have won dozens of awards since 2019 and continue to win nominations into 2024. Higanjima has the odd passing nomination, but does not have the same level of accolades. The nominations are mainly from film festivals commending Higanjima's adaptations, which might suggest the original comic is less accessible to wider audiences. As live action is not as flexible a medium as comics, Some of the more disturbing or fantastical elements are impossible to reproduce or intentionally pared down to appeal to more viewers. One of these manga is a true horror for a niche audience, and the other is a mainstream adventure story appealing to many readers. Demon Slayer was intentionally reworked, and their efforts to find the line were clearly very successful. Perhaps if they had continued Kagari Gari without the edits, it would have ended up more like Higanjima, and it wouldn't necessarily have been worse off. Vampire stories are popular across several genres. It is a popular trend in shoujo manga, with works like Tsukihime or My Monster Secret. As we've seen, it translates easily to seinen, with Helsing being an even earlier example. Fear is one of many emotions, and there are those who enjoy horror as a hobby, finding exhilaration in seeking out new opportunities for genuine terror. People read stories from infamous creators like Junji Ito or Stephen King. Check out Salem's Lot if you're interested in King's take on vampire fiction. On-screen horror is just as popular, if not more. In 2023, horror movies were a near-billion-dollar industry in North America. Combined with TV shows, the market is even larger and is steadily growing. And what would the horror genre be without the immortal vampire, rising from their coffins every so often to leave their mark? Thank you for listening this far into the video. I hope that this comparison has helped uncover what made these comics successful and why I enjoyed reading them. If you like one of these manga, you'll probably like the other, but I will warn you once again, Higanjima is not for the faint of heart. If you have suggestions for manga for the next Versus episode, or that you think are worth a read, please leave me a comment below. Like the video if you like vampire fiction, and subscribe if you want to see more videos. Take care, and happy reading.